Hello everyone, welcome to another WordPress theme development tutorial. In this lesson, we'll take a look at WordPress's search functionality. Or in other words, we'll learn how to add a search field about here in our theme. And we'll also learn to control the way that our theme formats the relevant search results screen. So those are the two topics we're going to cover today. Let's dive right in. Let's begin by taking a look at our theme files. In particular, we're interested in header.php because remember, we want to add the search form right about here. So in header.php, and again, every theme is different, but if you've been following along this theme development series, your code should look something similar to this. So inside this site header element, we're going to add a new element named header search, head search. You could name it anything you would like. We just want something that we can float to the right. And then within this div, we'll say PHP. There's a function in WordPress named get search form that will do a lot of the work for us. So if we refresh, we can see that there's already a search form. So now let's just float it to the right. So it sits where we want it to sit. So I'll go into my style sheet. I'll create a search section and I'll say header search float to the right. Okay, so now we have a search form and it's positioned where we want it to be positioned. But you may be thinking, well, the get search form function is great, but what if I want to customize the HTML that makes this search form? Well, it's pretty simple. We'll create a new file in our theme folder named searchform.php. Okay, and now anything that we place in this file will get output when this function runs. Now, just a moment ago, our theme folder did not contain a file named searchform.php, and WordPress was obviously still able to output this form. So what was going on there is that if WordPress doesn't detect that file, it will fall back to its default search form code, which looks something like this. So I just pasted in a bit of code. If you perform a web search for WordPress and then the name of this function, you will be able to find this default code and you can sort of use this as a place to begin and then customize it to fit your needs. Now, if I refresh, we see that absolutely nothing changes because we're still using the default HTML. I'm actually not going to make any modifications to the markup. I just included it for educational purposes so you can see what sort of code WordPress works with. If you want to change anything in here, feel free, but I will say that this code usually gets the job done. Let's, however, make a bit of style-based changes. So I want to remove this label text that says search for. So instead of deleting it from the HTML, I'm going to leave it in there for accessibility reasons. But in my style sheet, I'll say in the head search element, find the label, and then hide it by pushing it to the left. So now it's hidden, but for accessibility reasons, it's still there in the code. Now let's focus on making the search button uh, have a blue background with white text so it sort of matches the overall aesthetics of our site. And if your theme is different, uh, you can follow along, uh, but just use different colors. So in our HTML, we can see that the button has an ID of search submit. So in my style sheet, I'll say, if we're in the head search element, let's go ahead and select the search submit element. And let's just change the styling a bit. So we'll say background color equals the same blue that we're using throughout the rest of the site. We want the text to be white. Let's give it a, a bit of padding. Mm, it doesn't need much vertically. And let's give it a good amount on the horizontal left and right sides. Okay, so now if we refresh, that already looks a little bit better. Let's remove the border, border none. Okay, uh, let's work on making this input the same height as the button. So the first step would be to align them so that they're the same. So vertical align top, and then let's also add that to the input, which has an ID of S. So we'll create a new rule. If we're inside the head <clears throat> header search module, look for the S input. 
and also align it to the top. So now you can see that they're both aligned to the top and we just need to match the height. So we'll give uh, the input a bit of padding vertically. Looks like that's too much. Let's go down a little bit, three pixels vertical. Okay, so that matches, and I would imagine that this looks good in most browsers, but I will say that if you're building a theme for the real world and your client is very particular about your forms looking identical in many different browsers, then I recommend you perform a web search for something called Formalize or CSS Normalize or CSS Reset, and that will provide you with a bit of CSS code that you drop into your theme or your style sheet, and it will sort of level the playing field across all browsers and devices so you have a bit more predictability when it comes to styling forms. But that is really outside the scope of this video. So now let's move on to phase two of this video, which is controlling the way that search results get output. So for example, if I perform a search for opinion, you can see that it will return uh, the two opinion posts. But what if we want to customize this output? What if we want only the excerpt to show instead of uh, these full two paragraphs? And what if we want some sort of title above these posts that reads search results for quote opinion? Well, we can do just that very easily. So we'll hop back over to our theme code. WordPress will automatically look in our theme folder for a file named search.php to output the search results. Now, if your theme folder does not contain a search.php file, it will fall back and use index.php to output the search results. So what we can do is copy and paste the contents from index.php into this new search.php file and then make any customizations that we would like to see for the search results. So for example, let's go ahead and add the title text that reads search results for colon and then the search string that the user entered. So here we'll drop out of PHP and then we can drop back into PHP here. And then in between those two lines, uh, we can include the new header. So we'll say heading level two, search results for colon. Now WordPress, we'll drop into PHP. WordPress has a really neat function named the search query. It's that simple. It will output what the user searched for. So now if we refresh, we see search results for opinion. Next, let's go ahead and customize the search results by making sure that they output an excerpt instead of the full text. So in search.php, we'll scroll down here, and you can see that this is the logic that's choosing whether it should be the full content or the excerpt, but we only ever want the excerpt since this is a search results page. It's that simple. Finally, let's add a small detail that has the potential to improve the user experience. Let's add this term that they recently searched for into the input field itself. I think this will make more sense in just a moment. So I'm gonna to go to searchform.php and I know I said I wouldn't customize the markup, but I will just a little bit. So for the search field, I'm going to add an attribute named placeholder and then I'm gonna drop into PHP and say the search query. So now you can see that when you perform a search, this field will remember your most recent search. So it's really obvious to the user that this is what they just searched for. So if they search for news, it pulls up the news results, says search for news, and you get an extra reminder in the input field. And that will bring this search lesson to a close. But I want to segue in to a topic that is indirectly related that we're going to cover in our next lesson. And that topic is a function named get template part. Now the reason this is related is you might have noticed that when we created search.php, we copied the entire contents for index.php and then only customized a few things. So all of this code is duplicated and in programming, there's a principle, don't repeat yourself. And we are completely in violation of that principle. We are repeating ourselves a lot. We did this just to keep the lesson as simple as possible, but just know that in our next lesson, we're going to learn about the function named get template part, and it is the solution to this problem. We're going to learn how to not repeat ourselves, and we're going to learn how to be a lot more intelligent with our code, and when we need to break out for certain changes in certain templates. 
So thank you very much for watching this lesson. I hope you feel like you learned something. And stay tuned for more WordPress and web development tutorials. Thanks. Bye.